Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rusty78609 trying to get the camera straight in here. But anyway, what we're going to talk about now, we're, let's talk about the electric grid and electricity and electric bills and all that stuff. Why? Well, because I have an electric vehicle and I like to know about that sort of thing, but you need to know it anyway because if you have a house or sticks and bricks or whatever you've got, you're using electricity probably. And uh, one of the things you need to be aware of is, and I'm sure you already are, but there are off-grid electric prices and then there are, or excuse me, not off-grid, off-peak, off-peak electric prices per kilowatt hour and then there are peak power kilowatt hour prices. There's a 50% difference about. <clears throat> And in my area, I'm, I'm with Rio Grande Electric Co-op in Texas, Southwest Texas or West Texas. And the off-peak rate is 13 cents a kilowatt. That's rounded to the nearest whole number. And the peak rate per kilowatt hour is 19 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, you got that? So that's a 50% difference. The peak time, the peak rate time, is from 3 to 7 p.m. daily. 3 to 7 p.m. daily. From May the 2nd through September the 30th. Before May the 2nd and after September the 30th, it's always off peak because they don't have any energy issues because the weather in my area of Texas is quite pleasant during those months, all right? So they don't have to worry about a lot of demand, and so you're always, quote, off-peak prior to May the 2nd and after September the 30th. Is that great and good to know? Sure it is. And in your area, you probably have or can have peak rates year-round. And uh, But be aware that, uh, you know, if you're going to, let's say you've got an electric rain, electric oven, and uh, you want to cook a roast that's going to take about three or four hours or whatever to cook. Well, uh, I would suggest that you know when the peak rate hours are because you can save a little bit of money by doing that, by doing it during the off-peak rate. Uh, I'm not sure if you're getting road noise in this video or not. You may or may not. I don't have the external mic with me, and I didn't hook it up. Doesn't matter. Shouldn't be too bad, but if it is, it just is. So, yeah. But for those of you that have an electric vehicle like me, and you can charge at any time, and I mean really any time, I can, then, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, so you can actually, there's a way to go in and, and the settings and set it so that your car starts charging if you have it hooked up to a charger starts charging at 7 30 p.m and goes on and fills up you know what i mean but yeah so knowing your peak and off peak rate times whether you have an electric vehicle or not is important because you know you can save a little money i mean that's uh, and here in my area, that's a 50% difference in rates. That's a lot. You know, that'd be the equivalent of buying gas at $3 a gallon or buying gasoline at $4.50 a gallon. You know, which do you want? Hello? But anyway, we're on the way to Del Rio, Texas to do some grocery shopping today. And uh, it's a nice day. Temperature shows to be about 70 degrees right now at 9.09 a.m. There's some people from Europe riding bicycles across the United States. How do I know that? Well, because the Europeans seem to do that. You know, they'll ride their motorcycles or their bikes across the United States because they do it in Europe, and they feel like it's pretty much the same here until they get out here in the western part of Texas, and it's 150 miles between towns. I mean, yo, hello, yeah. So, yeah, then that would be, you could, in Europe, you could cross four countries in 150 miles. Anyway, enough said, what's that got to do with electric usage and rates and stuff? Nothing. But I just wanted to give you a heads up on that because uh, we're headed to uh, the 
future is all electric vehicles. That, that's it. That's a, that's a no-brainer. And with that in mind, uh, know when you got to know when to charge them, so to speak. You know, like you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So on and on we go, guys. I'm cruising down the highway at 65 miles an hour, and that's the speed limit. Everybody's passing me like I'm sitting still. Why? I don't know. Because they say that the speed limit signs are just a suggestion. Apparently that's true. But anyway, I've got 227 miles of rain. It's a 30 mile or 60 mile round trip to Del Rio and back. So no problem there. Uh, again, and we've been we've been averaging 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Is that good? Damn right. That's equivalent to about 90 miles a gallon for a gasoline car. So yeah, but I don't have any. I didn't have any issues or problems with. Uh, gasoline actually I mean it's certainly not a big item in my budget because I hardly ever travel I've had this car I don't know a month and a half or a month or whatever it is I got 989 miles of it wow I think mean, you so uh, no I don't drive much so I know I'm not trying to cost justify this car through savings on gasoline no uh, convenience you know not having to go to the gas pump and all that stuff that might be a little something, something, something there because you just do it at home, you know, whenever you choose. You know, you don't have to, I don't, this is the first time I've charged it in a week, or today will be the first time I've charged it in a week. You know, so I'm fine. You know, the electric car is working good for me. I think it'll work good for most people. And for those of you that are two car families or more, uh, one of those cars ought to definitely be an ele all electric vehicle. Why? Well, for those. Uh, under 100 mile trips, uh, you, you got some very economical, and and they're as far as I can tell. I hope knock on wood, my head. I hope they're pretty well maintenance free, you know, because it doesn't look like you do hardly anything until uh, 100,000 or 200,000 miles, which I probably won't keep it that long anyway. Off to our left, beyond the railroad cars, which you can't see. It's Laughlin Air Force Base. It's a training facility. And here comes a, a T3 trainer going to come right over. So what's coming into your picture right about now, maybe? Uh, there should be a jet. Do you see it? Uh, maybe it didn't pick it up for some reason. Oh, interesting. I didn't see it. But it was there. So I think it's called T3s. Anyway, guys, just cruising, snooping, talking. This is Rusty78609 saying, there goes another one. Do I see it in the picture here? I don't see it in the picture, but there was another one. They've got two types of trainers. they got little jet trainers. I think they call them T3s. And then they've got some prop trainers. They make all them the same things. I don't know. But yeah, they buzz all around here like little bees. And, uh, and the thing of it is, is the Air Force is going to all drones. You know, they, 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 you know, they, have, they have pilotless aircraft. So, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're having a hard time transitioning from the old to the new. But whatever. Thumbs up. Carpe diem. Carpe diem means seize the day in Latin. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye bye. Buy anything you want anytime. But if you think about it, use the link to Amazon products in the description of all my videos. Why? Because it doesn't cost you a penny. Just click on the link. Go to Amazon. Buy whatever you want. Drink plenty of water. Stretch. Walk. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Very important. Very important. Keep out the negativity, guys. Keep out the negativity. No kidding. And guess where most of that negativity comes from? the news. Your choice. Adios amigos. Bye-bye.